there again, too, uh, it's too early to really give a definite yes or no to that answer, really. It's still new. It's new throughout the country. Uh, different areas throughout the country are trying it. And uh, uh, areas that I've seen so far do not carry it on their shelves. They do carry it in an isolated area. And uh, it's still new. Right now it's really too early to tell if it's working. We've had a lot of people uh, call and been interested in the uh, program. They've read it in our ads and they've, uh, it's been accepted by a few people throughout the city. But uh, as a total program, it's, it's going to take a while yet to see if it's going to continue on. And may I say how much I appreciate your invitation to be here and to be your keynote speaker for this convention. And to each and every one of you who has fought, bled, and died with me in previous elections, and incidentally, we've won more elections in Oklahoma than anybody else in the race for the Senate, too. Dizziness is not a normal sensation, although there are 14 million people that live with it every day. The, the problem is one that requires attention to the degree of finding out why it's there. Dizziness as such is not a diagnosis, but really is a symptom.
So familiar people there. I'm going to go across to this uh, hospital or medical center right over here. It's the policy of the commission, it's my policy as the director to investigate anything, make the facts known to the public. I don't, we don't have anything to cover up, we don't have anybody to protect, we don't have anybody to persecute. So the, uh, but you know, when it uh, hits the pharmacists and the kitchen employees and the professionals, the nurses, the nurses' aides and the physicians, and the children and their parents, enough's enough.
you have to have a blood bank, you have to have an obstetrician, you have to have an anesthesiologist, and there are very few places where you're gonna, you can have all of those things to make it safe to even think about having a baby vaginally after you've had a cesarean section scar. It isn't that it's impossible or that it is even um, uh, terribly dangerous. It's just when you're the unlucky one whose scar ruptures, everybody's got to be able to take care of it instantly and there are very few places that can accomplish that. <laughs> She weighed. No, darling, I thought I said seven pounds, three and a half pounds. Right, isn't that the wrong number? She's a lot of hair. Look at all that. It'll It isn't that it's impossible or that it is even um, uh, terribly dangerous. It's just when you're the unlucky one whose scar ruptures, everybody's got to be able to take care of it instantly, and there are very few places that can accomplish that. that I think that there will be a full and complete, fair, objective, and impartial investigation by the public integrity section of the Justice Department of this whole matter. And uh, I have assured them that I will cooperate in every way possible to see that justice is done and the truth is reached. And I make that assurance to you today. And I assure you unequivocally that when it's all said and done, that there will not be any evidence of any kind that Gene Stipe has been guilty of any wrongdoing whatsoever. I was when I first got in trouble about 10 years ago. Uh, I was in California. Now I have a position to help kids like you that might be strayed towards getting in trouble and, and experimenting with drugs and stuff like this. We want to show you kids here in Norman that, uh, look, there's another way to, to live in besides, you know, popping a few pills and smoking a little weed. You know, there's, there's other ways. And uh, as soon as we establish our office here, we'll help. Okay? Thank you for your time. Thank you. And in any way that you can offer support through volunteer, we plan to put on bake sales and car washes to help raise money. Is this a private organization? It's a private organization. Okay? Thank you very much for your time. You have a good day. 
we have had good response about the program, but people just don't want to have it in their building. So this is why I'm out today, trying to sell it to these people and assure them that it is a necessary thing that we have uh, to conduct uh, and keep the, the program alive and going in the community. that their conduct is calculated to do one thing and one filling his own press conferences. I want to smoke them all for. Now, there is no legitimate basis for any charges to be filed. And I'm here to meet the issue head on. I have nothing to hide. I have not been involved in any illegal conduct, and the smear that they attempted by the anonymous phone calls and the anonymous leaks was calculated for one purpose and one purpose only, and that was to smear me. And that was the same purpose of the press conference yesterday. There wasn't any effort to set any records straight. It was an effort to smear me by innuendo and insinuation that's unfair and improper and un-American for them to try to interject themselves and interfere with the electoral process. Bank and the power generating power is one of the primary, foremost cost for an electrical system. So if we I'm today noting that I will encourage use of price of day rate making in the Corporation Commission. Thereby, we will allow for a lower rate for those who use electricity during off-peak periods, that is, during periods when there is not a large demand on the system. This will help those who are participating in an effort to reduce the cost of electrical service in this state. This program is one that has been adopted in some other states, and it is time Oklahoma took positive steps to reward ratepayers who are making an effort to participate in reduction of cost for our electrical systems. He came here and from out of state and talked to insignificant and just where to add to or take away sidetracked by peanuts. He's gotten into the uh, to the, he took a poll last week at the uh, Shaw uh, Mall. The difference between chasing a mouse and a herd of elephants. Uh, here, uh, Buck Ravel was on the trail of a herd of elephants. And he got off, he saw the mouse, and he got sidetracked by a mouse. That's uh, sort of like a biscuit eater, you know. A biscuit eater is a bird dog that'll be on the trail of a covey of quails and a rabbit will come along and he'll start ch chasing the rabbit and forget about the quails. That's what Ravel has done here. And I think he ought to get back on the job and get after something that's really big and significant and disgraceful and a scandal, the likes of which we've never had in this state. They have first-hand knowledge that I never received any money from McAllister Frozen Foods. And for him to stand on some type of technical matter concerning whether or not it's an audit is grossly unfair and indicates the tenor of his conduct insofar as this matter is concerned.
three o'clock, we had a walkout, and we're in uh, implemented our strike plan. We have four stations in operation at this time. Um, we will probably implement four more stations in the next few minutes. We will give a limited service to the public. We'll do everything we can do to give them protection. And that's about all I can say at this time. decided to take this action. More pay. Chief said last night that the city is now inadequately protected. Uh, do you agree? It's not the very best. What is the reason? He is violating legislative intent. It's a subterfuge. He has been dragging his feet, and I am alerting the alumni, the faculty and students, and all of the people of Oklahoma to what the chancellor is doing. And he's, he, I think we put the responsibility directly on the chancellor. He is jeopardizing the future of Oklahoma's higher education system because he sees that he can use the compliance plan to achieve his ultimate goal, which I see as closing Langston. This letter said invited. That's the polite language to use. But they were told, they were told to be there. And if it's necessary, we will have some of them, when the grand jury is ultimately called in Oklahoma County, to come forth before the grand jury and testify. They didn't get the letter, the bosses got the letter, and the bosses did the inviting. You know how the bosses invite them.
I went to a public telephone booth in the basement of the Capitol, assured both men that I was calling for myself, had no connection with the governor's office at all, that I was not calling at the direction of the governor, and that indeed nobody in the office probably knew that I was making the call. And I told them, and I remember the phrase very well because I worded it very carefully. I told them what had happened as far as Muskovsky's gutter charges were concerned that day, and that if they or anyone they knew wanted to attend the rally at the airport that was going to take place at 6 or 6.30 that evening, that I would appreciate it. But I uh, uh, made very clear to them that it was strictly a personal call for me to them and had nothing to do with the governor's office. deeply challenged. I didn't have time to prepare a speech. I flew. I left at 3.50 uh, last night, your time. I've got my remarks on the back of the TWA envelope here. <laughs> and uh, I can only say that uh, this is one of the most uh, challenging and exciting moments of, of my life. To imagine being called to this post is one of great gratification and great responsibility. I think I know something of the expectations of this community of scholars, of this faculty, for whom I have great respect, and of the people of the state of Oklahoma, and I will just do the very best I can. I deeply challenged. I didn't have time to prepare a speech. I flew. I left at 3.50 uh, last night, your time. I've got my remarks on the back of the TWA envelope here. <laughs> and uh, I can only say that uh, this is one of the most uh, challenging and exciting moments of, of my life. To imagine being called to this post is one of great gratification and great responsibility. I think I know something of the expectations of this community of scholars, of this faculty, for whom I have great respect, and of the people of the state of Oklahoma, and I will just do the very best I can. I You are a president. If you are a politician, you make your speeches and cop out. If you are a president, you put our brothers in jail, you get them out. To welcome our president, Desmond, of that welcome. So we're happy to welcome you, sir, and to present you to this uh, combination of faculty, staff, students, and media representing Blazer. I had rather come in and do the job as the president of this university uh, as best I can from day to day and leave to those of you who will be watching ever so closely the assignment, uh, the assignment of these labels. Again, I wouldn't prejudge uh, what the final ruling might be. All I can say is we're not going to release people back on society that would constitute a threat. 
And I think the judge would also understand that there simply is no money available, certainly not until the next session of the legislature comes back and has an opportunity to study the situation. And I hope he would realize uh, that the taxpayers don't have a surplus of money. People have a hard time paying their taxes. We have other needs in this state besides the prison system. And I would hope that the judge would not issue an order that would presume to set the budgetary priorities for the elected officials in the elected legislature of this state. Well, I think it, it's, a, it's an inference that, that I might be leaning towards one side or the other, and this obviously, you know, I don't have any leanings towards one side. Well, I think it, it's, a, it's an inference that, that I might be leaning towards one side or the other, and this obviously, you know, I don't have any leanings towards one side or the other. I'm here for one thing, to help them. If there's any way that something I suggest, something I do, can help the parties reach an agreement, that's, that's the reason for my being here. If I took sides with one or the other, um, I, I couldn't possibly accomplish anything. And you can discuss both or the utilities in the Galleria area, the second row government for downtown redevelopment. In view of the request by the State Historic Preservation Review Commission to its staff last Thursday to have a National Register nomination prepared, we feel a decision at this time on a demolition contract for the Hales Building would be inappropriate. Dr. Cross and members of the Commission, because of the above, I do not feel that the Hales Building justifies nomination to the National Register of Historical Places. Therefore, I am assuming a responsibility to this office by determining that no further efforts will be made in this direction for the Hales Building. Signed, Harry H. Dupree, M.D. That's all you have to do. You have okay, well, you don't color in it. Mm -hmm. I'd rather use that than use one that we're going to have to. Oh, that's what I'm asking now. Is that what you want to do? Yeah. So it's in a way that you young ladies think we should do it, but we have to make decisions now. It will probably hamper the program mostly, but I'm not a public relations person. I like to do my job, you know. I don't like to talk a lot of trash, you know, like other people. You know, a lot of coaches can talk a real good game. <laughs> I don't like to talk real good games. I like to do real good games. Coal, which is behind schedule, and nuclear is certainly behind schedule. Those elected to the 
to those who so de issues that, that we can still govern ourselves. That was well compromised too, although I think Oklahoma Natural's been asking. Markets in Oklahoma, next they really go, uh, I think. I think that's particularly important for Oklahoma because we're a state that has enormous remaining supplies of natural gas. That's why it's good for Oklahoma. Uh, in the compromise, deep gas was deregulated and allowed to go to, will be allowed to go to market prices. As a result of that increased drilling that uh, we can foresee, I think that the economic boom in Oklahoma will not only continue but double or triple within the next three to five years. It might even exceed that. Well, it appears to me from our spot checks that we're going to have a heavier than normal turnout in the rural areas and perhaps slightly below normal in the metropolitan areas. We surveyed 24 precincts in six different counties in Oklahoma and Tulsa counties. In most cases, the vote appears to be slightly below normal. In the four rural counties we surveyed, Cole, Jackson, Woodward, and Mays, 
uh, turnout appeared in the opinion of precinct officials to be at least average for a primary election and in some cases heavier than average. We're here at the Hilton Inn West. As you can hear, Lieutenant Governor George Nye just entered the room, a room full of hundreds of campaign supporters. Very happy to see him. You expect to be this far ahead at this point in the returns? Well, I, I, I really don't know. I, I was hopeful to be ahead. I really haven't seen the return, so you can tell me more than uh, uh, I just, I just, I'm happy to be ahead. I don't know what I expected. I, it's been a hard race, and people have responded, and I'm, I'm very excited, and I'm just happy to be ahead. Are you confident there won't be a runoff? No, I'm prepared for a runoff. I, I there's, there's always been a runoff. We, we, uh, we would, we would expect at this time a runoff. There's always been. We're prepared for it, and we're ready to go. It's just we take the latter one rung at a time. We're talking with candidate Ron Schatz. Ron, you must feel pretty confident at this point, having 75% of the vote. Well, we feel confident about the vote that's in. Uh, there's still, you know, approximately 80% of the vote still out, so uh, it's a little early to tell for sure. But uh, the trend that's going right now, we're more than pleased with, and just hope it keeps up for, you know, another hour or so. How late will you wait before you concede the victory, or before you announce the victory? Announce victory rather. until we're sure we have a majority of the votes, and uh, when we're sure of that, then we'll probably uh, start thinking about it. And it's going to take. Uh, well, depending on the turnout, but uh, probably 60, 70,000 votes, uh, something that t neighborhood, uh, before we'd know for sure that we've won without a runoff. Thank you very much. We're you talking bet. with candidate Ryan Schatz, who says he'll still wait to announce victory, but he's pretty happy right now. Now back to the news center. From what I gather uh, in what he said publicly yesterday, the two stumbling blocks to an agreement on a debate that is run and sponsored by the Democratic Party leadership are, first of all, the public participation question or public presence question, and second, uh, the presence uh, in the debate of questions on subject matter that has been agreed to. The thing that I didn't want was a lot of canned questions. In other words, they wanted us to agree on the questions ahead of time and have all the questions written out. Well, then all you'd have was not any debate, but uh, just the candidates getting up and giving prepared speeches on topics that were canned. The people don't want to see a canned debate or anything that's staged. I think we want to have real questions from real reporters.
in there is prepare to mount. We think that the Army has been in existence over 200 years and that it's only in the last 68 years that the Army has been motorized, then we can appreciate the fact that horses and horsepower symbolize the Army over the greatest part of its existence. All the talk we do here and everything we discuss is basically around the 1916 period. So this is why the men, you know, through their normal talk, you think they were still living back in the historical days in 1916 with the field artillery. All of them uh, expressed an interest in uh, coming and working with and trying to be a, uh, uh, an effective uh, educational agent in an urban setting. The particular composition of this city being a pluralistic, uh, multi-ethnic southwestern city was uh, attractive to them. Uh, certainly to the uh, location being the capital city of the city of Oklahoma and uh, the opportunity to work uh, directly on legislative matters uh, related to education were all plus factors. <laughs>